as you'll see, really the issue is that you have to treat dry disease as a systemic disease. And if you don't think about dry... dry disease as a systemic disease. And if you don't think about dry eye as a systemic disease, then I think you're going to be hitting yourself and you'll, you'll never fix the problem. You'll have, you're going to okay. see this PFOS dues, the definition of dry disease, but I cannot underemphasize the importance of, of systemic disease and how the systemic disease and, and your health is driving this. And so while no question that dry is a multifactorial disease, and no question that there's a loss of homeostasis. There is a systemic cause often for it. And sometimes it's not necessarily systemic, sometimes it can be local, but you have to think a lot more, you have to think more broadly when you see your patients. Now I'm not saying that the, the different treatments that we have are not good fixes and not good patches, because they are. And, but you have to always get back to your roots. Get back to the roots of why we have disease. The reason and why we have eye disease or ocular surface disease is, is often because it's, a, it's part of a bigger picture. Um, but like, for instance, autoimmune disease. Um, you know, you have to think about the underlying causes of dry eye. You have to think about, but also the dysbiosis of the gut. I'm still very interested in, in how your gut drives, in, the, in, in many cases, dry eye disease. It drives lots of systemic disease. And so, again, you have to think about these intrinsic things. What, are, what medicines are they on, okay? If they're on blood pressure meds, if they're on, uh, if they're on medicines that are drying them out, if they're on antihypertensives, okay, and they're, and they're, they're losing, that is a, a great reason to have dry eyes. So I think that the next slide is one of my favorite slides ever. And this is actually a quote out of uh, this paper, which I think is a fantastic paper. Cyclosporin and lifidograph, the two FDA-approved therapies to inhibit T-cell activation, and cytokine are the two that inhibit those two. While these therapies represent a major advance, they are not effective in improving the discomfort and corneal epithelial disease in all, in all patients. They are a patch. And I'll keep coming back to that. We have this big mechanism of disease. And I like this, I, I like this because this comes, again, from this amazing study. It's, it's, what I love about this is it, it, it has all this great stuff here. And everybody wants to focus on all these really interesting cytokines that, that, that cause dry eye disease. But you know, something really tiny over here, systemic drugs. I mean, it's crazy. This is a small, they have this on the side. I mean, this should be like the big, it should be the big thing. It should right. be, for instance, blinking. Again, one of the smallest, um, you know, fonts in this entire thing. And yet blinking is a, an incredibly important thing that again, we forget about. So when you think about dry disease, remember that we're putting a patch we're patching, it. we're patching often systemic problems, okay, because of systemic drugs that we take, because of lifestyle choices, and it does cause this, 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 this issue um, where you start losing the regulation of the surface of the eye. Okay.